and we would like to welcome His Holiness, Ch His Holiness Chandramoli, Chandramoli Swami Maharaj on Bhakti Sangha Japa conference call. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for, uh, uh, for uh, enlightening us with the Srimad Bhagavatam class today. Whenever you're ready, Prabhuji Ma Maharaj, you may take the call over. I'm, I apologize, Maharaj. Sometimes, you know, the word we keep slipping up as Prabhuji, Prabhuji, because it's out of habit. Please don't take any offense, Maharaj. Please go ahead and we'll wait for you. You call me Prabhu G, you actually give me some credit. <laughs> you're too kind, Maharaj. Thank you. Whenever you're ready, Omagyan Timirandasya, Kinajana Salakaya, Chaksu Unmilitam Yena, Tas, my Sri Guru Veda Maha. Jai Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prasthai Bhutaleshu Mati Bhakti Vedanta Swami Tinamine Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pacharine Nirvasesa Sunyavadi Pastyatyade Satarine Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadhar Sivasati Gauravakta Rinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare Hare Hari Rama, Hari Rama, 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 Hari Hari. Panchakalpa, Trubhistya, Kripa Sindhu Beva, Japatitanam, Bhavane Bhyo, Vaishnave Bhyo, Namaho, Namaha. Okay, we can begin with the verse. <laughs> um, go right to the translation. <laughs> Uh, normally, we don't chant the prose. This is the meter is in prose, or the Sanskrit is written in prose, so we don't uh, chant that. In our classes, when we come across these particular verses, we simply do the word for word. But here we'll go right into the translation. That most exalted devotee, Maharaj Bhart, in this way engaged constantly in devotional service of the Lord. Naturally, his love for Vasudev Krishna increased more and more and melted his heart. Consequently, he gradually lost all attachments for regulative duties. The hairs on his body stood on end and all the ecstatic bodic symptoms were manifest. Tears flowed from his eyes, so much so that he could not see anything. Thus, he constantly meditated on the reddish lotus feet of the Lord. At that time, his heart, which was like a lake, was filled with the water of ecstatic love. When his mind was immersed in that lake, he, for, he even forgot the regulative service to the Lord. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada's very succinct purport. <clears throat> When one is actually advanced in ecstatic love for Krishna, eight transcendental and blissful symptoms are manifested in the body. Those are the symptoms of perfection arising from loving service to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Since Maharaj Bhart was constantly engaged in devotional service, all the symptoms of ecstatic love were manifested in his body. <clears throat> Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. So here we see something uh, very constructive. Um, the results of his absorption in devotional service manifested in ecstatic symptoms of love for Krishna. Srila Rupa Goswami, who is known as the Abhideya Acharya. He is the Acharya that teaches us the science of bhakti in its detail. And part of that detailed description, he tells us about the stages of bhakti, which are Daostrada, Sadhu Sangha, Bhajana Kriya, Anarti Nivritti, Nishta, Ruchi, Ashakti, Bhava, and Prema. The first six or yeah, first six stages 
indicate sadhana bhakti and then bhava bhakti on the seventh eighth stage and then the last stage prema bhakti each of the stages or each of the sections has different stages within themselves which exhibit certain characteristics and activities all centered around devotional service to the lord Maharaj Bharat was the uh, king of the world. He was the exalted son of Rishabdev, who was an incarnation of the Supreme Lord, Sri Krishna himself, who came to teach a very simple type of yoga, renunciation of everything material. And, Ma- and Rishabdev, he had 100 sons. Out of the 100 sons, 50, were exalted. I believe 11 became Kshatriyas, 21 became Brahmanas. And one out of the, all of them was the most exalted. Out of the, he had 10 sons who were the most exalted and out of that Maharaj Bhart was. And so Rishabdev left the world And uh, he arranged for his son to become king of the world. Uh, This world that we live in, we call it the earth planet, but that's just a name that is given to us because people live on the earth. (laughs) That's why. But it actually means there is the previous name was Ilavati Varsha. And then after Ilavati Varsha, it became Bart Varsha. And King half named after King Bart. So the actual name, the Vedic ancient cultural name for this planet is Bart Varsha. Varsha means island. Uh, so we call this planet an island because it floats in air. Just like a land item floats in water, so it gets the name island. And so the uh, uh, Aribo Mataji, Somadatri. Excuse me a second. Yeah. So uh, this earth planet floats in an ocean of air, therefore it's called the Varsha. Varsha means island Mm -hmm. and named after Bart. Uh, He had reached the highest stages of Baba Bhakti, almost on the level of pure prema. (laughs) Although he was, his heart melted in love of God, he was just bordering on pure prema devotional service. That's how exalted it is. And he was exhibiting the symptoms because you can tell a person by their characteristics, their symptoms and their activities. And so his symptoms was that his mind became absorbed in Krishna in loving devotion compared to his heart was like a lake filled with that ecstatic love. So in other words, it was immense the quality of bhakti that he had achieved because bhakti is unlimited as Krishna. <laughs> Krishna creates the principle of devotion to himself through himself, which is manifested by Srimati Radharani, who was called Bhakti Devi. She is the supreme deity of pure devotional service, or Ananya Bhakti or completely unalloyed love for Krishna. Her level of bhakti is not explainable or even understandable by anyone. (laughs) Even Krishna cannot, (laughs) it's so exalted. So that bhakti is in the heart and she is there, she is the supreme ocean of that bhakti. So everyone has a little bit of that ocean in their heart of Radharani's pure love for Krishna. 
But that ocean that is in our heart is also as unlimited as the supreme source of that ocean, Bhakti Devi. Of course, one can never reach to the level of Radharani, but we can reach to higher and higher levels of love of God. And so here we understand what is the results of the execution of devotional service. People in the material world are struggling, and I use that word very emphatically, for finding satisfaction, peace, and ultimately happiness. But here is the, is the principle, loving service to the Supreme Lord awakens one's natural ecstatic love for the Lord. Nitya Siddha Krishna Prema Saru Kalmanoi Sravanadi Siddhi Chitte Kodiye Udoi. This verse mentioned in Chaitanya Charitamrita is the foundation for understanding the living entity's nature. What is that nature? That in the hearts of all living entity, pure love for Krishna is there. <coughs> So Bhar Maharaj had attained that level of realization through his ecstatic love, service to the Lord. And that's available to everyone because everyone has that propensity. Everyone has that innate quality. Everyone has that uh, destiny to reach pure love of God. So what we're reading is something we can also attain to if we practice bhakti in a very, according to Srila Rupa Goswami's uh, delineation of this, the, the characteristics that make up bhakti yoga, to be enthusiastic, to be determined despite whatever obstacles we run into, and to be patient in the execution of our service. To become attached to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord, and especially his holy names. To very carefully uh, avoid the association of materialistic people. And to very scrutinizingly study the scriptures in such a way that one understands how one should execute bhakti. Because bhakti is a science. Uh, just like if you go into, when, you, when we speak of science, sometimes we think of laboratory. So in a laboratory, there is an experiment. And so the laboratory conditions are part of the experiment. And the ingredients that is put into the, into the experiment make up the experiment. In other words, when you apply service, active service to Krishna with the desires to please Krishna in an atmosphere of devotion, that's there's the lab. The lab has to be the, is the atmosphere, the atmosphere of devotion. Then Gradually, we move through the stages, coming up to the stage of bhava, bhava bhakti. Here, we're getting the very higher stages of bhava bhakti on the, uh, on the border of pure love of God, Krishna Prema. Now, uh, Prabhupada doesn't get into a lot of descriptions because he, he can see that this particular verse is self-explanatory. There's not much we can say in terms of how it works. It works because it's natural. It works because it is ordained by the great sages and saints in the past who have also experienced it. And it is confirmed by the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna himself, in his words in Srimad Bhagavatam and in other Vedic literatures. <laughs> so, um, one has to get attached to Krishna. <laughs> Generally, we are attached to something. We're attached to our husband, our wife, our children, 
our material possessions that surround our personal relationships. We're attached to something in this world. We have to transfer that attachment to Krishna and make Krishna the source of our attachment, which means the source of our attention, which means the source of everything we do. Or we might not say source, but we might say the, the beneficiary of everything we do or the object of everything we do. That is Krishna. One cannot achieve these higher stages of bhakti until one makes Krishna foremost. Krishna has to be foremost in everything we do. It doesn't, nece it doesn't necessarily mean we stop. We Bhart Maharaj was also a grihasta. He had family, he had a kingdom, he had responsibilities, but he did everything as a service to the Lord using everything, his intelligence, his mind, his words, his resources, and everything that was in his control in the service of the Lord with the pleasure of the Lord. And therefore he became perfect <clears throat> in his devotional service. And that is the process. Uh, we cannot uh, come to these higher stages unless we connect everything in our life to Krishna. If we see separate, if we see something separate from Krishna, we're seeing something in a material way, which means in a temporary way, which means in the wrong way. Because <laughs> temporary means mistaken. If something is temporarily true, it is not true. It appears to be true, at a certain time and under a certain circumstance, but when that circumstance or that time frame starts to travel, then that same thing no longer is seen in the same way or experienced in the same way. But that's not with Krishna. Our relationship with Krishna only becomes greater. It cannot go backwards unless we allow it to. The process of devotional service means moving forward towards Krishna's lotus feet in devotion. Krishna, Krishna Mata, Krishna Pita, Krishna Dana Pran. The most dearest people in our life is our mother, our father, and whatever treasures we have accumulated in, in our life. These things are the most important in a material sense. But when we make Krishna in these categories, Krishna, Matta, Krishna, Pitta, Krishna, Dana, Pran, then we become Krishnaized. So much so that everything else becomes less important. Here it says, here he says, he, he even forgot his regulative service to the Lord. Interesting. He was doing service to the Lord, but he was so immersed in the ecstatic love for the Lord that he even forgot his, his service to the Lord. Of course, he forgot because that ecstatic love was so overwhelming, but he never gave up his service to the Lord. <laughs> but it shows that the power of this loving emotion, because love is the complete emotion. Love includes everything, every other emotion within it. Love is the nature of the living entity and love is what all living entities are aspiring for, to uh, give love and to receive love. Mm -hmm. And that giving and receiving is perfected in our relationship with Krishna. We might not be able to always understand that in a day-to-day -day life, but if we look at it, in a very seriously and contemplative move, we can see Krishna is very much a part of our life in everything we do. And we can make his personal appearance foremost in our life when we actually remember him with devotion. 
serve him with devotion, chant his glories and remember his glories, speak his glories to others. Then when we become Krishna addicted, just like you see two people who have a loving relationship with each other, they can't forget each other even for a moment. And when they're with other people, a lot of times they talk about their, their lover. Or even if they don't talk about it, it becomes, it's in their mind anyway, even if they're doing something else. Mm -hmm. so love is so all inclusive and encompassing that it simply grabs all aspects of the living entity's existence and points it in the direction of the object of love, like that. So love develops by service and it increases through loving service or service with the desire to please. And then as that service with the desire matures, symptoms start to arouse. And here Prabhupada in his purport mentions the eight transcendental symptoms that are manifested. Uh, I can't remember all eight of them, but one is rolling on the ground. Two is standing here is on the body. Three is shivering. Uh, four is the body becomes pale. Uh, five, there is the shedding of tears, um, st becoming stunned, six. So there's eight symptoms. And when them all sim eight symptoms reach the height of each of their symptoms, that is called Mahabhagavat. That is the highest form of expression. And that's only there in Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Srimati Radharani and in Madhavendra Puri. In the Chaitanya Charitamrita, it says that there's no fourth person named. <laughs> These three have reached, have, are the stage of the highest. You can see how exalted Madhavendra Puri is. He's, a, he's given on the same level as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu practically. Although he is a jiva. <laughs> who has appeared in this world, he's an eternal associate of the Lord who appeared in this world, to enunciate Radharani's bhakti within the process of pure devotional service. Mm -hmm. So um, these eight symptoms, when they reach perfection or limitations, then that is called Mahabhava. There's nothing higher than that. And, that. and that's on the eighth stage of prema, which is the highest and most complete stage of love. But then again, uh, I don't want to sound that, that, that when you reach that stage, there's no higher stage. That in that particular stage, there's no other stages, but there's more, and there's more deepness in each of the stages, in each, in that, each of that stage. So just like if you go into the ocean, there are different levels of how deep the ocean is. Mm -hmm. In some places, the ocean is seven miles deep. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how deep that is, seven miles down? There's fishes on the bottom of that ocean that you never see or never hear of because they never come up. So just like devotees, when they are absorbed in ecstatic love of God, they never surfaced to somehow or other do something something else in this world that is based on the temporary nature of activities. So we're getting a little bit of indication of pure devotional service and how Bart Maharaj had achieved that. Now, as we go on to this particular narration, we see Bart Maharaj uh, entering into a different consciousness and uh, it's quite interesting what happens to him um, after reaching such a height of spiritual ecstasy he seems to have gone will go down after some time so this is an also an indication that as you go up you can also go down <laughs> um, bart maharaj went down by accident not by purpose 
and and this and you'll see in the, in the narration what is that accident and this is the thing that each of us have to be very very careful in our krishna consciousness who we associate with and how we associate with these are the two things who we associate with and how do we carry on our association when these two things are proper we associate with devotees in the mood of loving service to the devotees then we have reached the perfection of association if we associate in order to get some material benefit in that association then our consciousness moves in that direction like that and in the association of non-devotees they are interested in sense gratification and material gain so one should be very diligent conscious cautious not to become involved in that kind of association now that opens up another area what is association and what is not association so i'll leave that alone for now but ultimately as lord chaitanya told sanatan goswami when sanatan goswami said what is the first business of a devotee who wants to make progress on devotional service the lord said asat sangha tayaga asat sangha tayaga a vaishnava achar asat sang tayaga to give up tayaga means renunciation to give up the association of asat those who are materialists and take to the sat those who are spiritualists that was the that's the first instruction that is given to devotees who are serious in their execution of devotional service okay so i'll stop here and we'll see if there's any comments and questions Hare Krishna Prabhuji, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada and Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much for your nectarian class, Prabhuji, and thank you again and again for reinforcing and showing the path that how we can develop bhakti in our heart. I hope we all will be able to apply, Prabhu Maharaj. I keep saying, Prabhuji, I am so sorry. Please, please don't take offense, Maharaj. If there is any I question. <laughs> You don't have to come, you don't have to apologize. Whatever you say is perfect. <laughs> You're so kind, Maharaj. Thank you so much. If there are any questions, devotees, we can ask Maharaj now. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Um, Krishna. <laughs> Such a wonderful class. Thank you so much. I, I got so many um, beautiful reminders. I don't have a question, but I just have some appreciations. I really um, appreciated the way that you explained. And we've heard it so many times, but it just hit me a different way today, how you explained that service to the Lord awakens love for the Lord. And um, that's so... Um, <laughs> Yeah, it just hit me, it touched my heart in such a different way today because it um, sometimes mm. when we're doing a lot of service and we, we, in our minds, we know that we're doing it for Krishna, but we kind of, or at least I, I can't speak for others, um, kind, things kind of wander away and we're just doing the service without really focusing on why we're doing the service. Um, and so it, it just brings me just back to... Yeah, oh. just remember Krishna. That's why you're doing your service. Yeah, yeah. And Remembering so, Krishna is the is the perfection of the offering. And it's also um, it also helps me. Um, it also gives me some excitement <laughs> to do service because it makes me feel like right. That's right. That's that's the goal is to keep doing the service for Krishna, and it will awaken 
more love for Krishna. So I'm, I'm very grateful for you saying that. Um, Prabhupada and, used to say, Prabhupada used to say, everyone loves Krishna. Everyone is looking for Krishna. Some people know it and some people don't. <laughs> no, he would say, everyone is looking for love. That love is Krishna. Uh, some people, everyone is looking for Krishna. Some people know it and some people don't. <laughs> because you can't get away from Krishna. Krishna is everything. <laughs> Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Um, and the other thing I was thinking as you were speaking about, um, you know, pure devotees, how sometimes they're in that ocean and they, and they don't come up. Like you were saying about the, the fish at the bottom of the ocean. And I was thinking, thank Krishna <laughs> that Srila Prabhupada did come up and make an appearance so we could see him because he really gave us so much that, um, yeah. There's just no way to, you know, show the, the amount of gratitude that we need to or to be, to repay him. So thank you. Thank you, Maharaj. Yeah, for Prabhupada, he didn't need anything for himself. He was happy. He was in Vrindavan. He was in the Radha Damodar temple. And he was completely absorbed in Krishna. But he had his mission given to him by his spiritual master. And so he forsake his own happiness in order to uh, give Krishna consciousness to the world. It was a complete sacrifice on his part. And the hardships that he un had to undergo were difficulties that many people could not tolerate. But he did it because this is also an example of how love takes its next step. Love takes its next step when you're not only satisfied in that relationship, but you want to share that good fortune with others and make them also fortunate. So that's how it works, that a great devotee cannot simply uh, be content with their, their own spiritual success. They want to give it to others, even at the risk of accepting many, many difficulties. So that's, that's taking their love to a higher state because that's what Krishna wants. He wants everyone to come back to him in devotional service. And so any efforts we make to help others in that way is, is, is appreciated by Krishna immensely. So we might think, well, what, what can I do? And as soon as you start thinking like that, then Krishna will reveal to you what you can do. Everyone can do something to spread Krishna consciousness. Thank you. If you, if you want to keep it, you have to give it. You can't keep it unless you give it. <laughs> The example is a pot filled with water, but has a crack in it. You put water in the pot and it has a little crack on the side. So the water is seeping out and slowly. So unused knowledge is like a leaky pot. Well, as soon as you use it, you keep filling that pot and it never empties. <laughs> Here's the secret. If you want to become Krishna conscious, you want to find more and more happiness in Krishna conscious, you, you give it to others. That's all. Find ways to do it. And that's, that's what Krishna wants. <laughs> so. Krishna has, he's a person and he has desires. Mm -hmm. But his desire is for the benefit of everyone. Not, his desires are not personal. They're for everyone. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Mm 
Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much. Very, very nice. And you have explained everything very nicely. And it just goes yes. right, right through the heart. Hare um, Krishna. Maharaj. Maharaj, I have a question for someone. Uh, there is one person, one she's a devotee, you know, she's not initiated, but she's practicing chanting and also serving like that. But then her husband is not favorable. Well, he was before, but now he has turned. He has turned, and he's not favorable anymore. So how I can help her to stay on the path and also serve her husband nicely? For chanting. <clears throat> uh, yeah, <clears throat> our example is the best way to influence others by our personal example. But we can get to know the person and get to know how to speak to that person and find opportunities to indicate that I found happiness and you can also find happiness. People are attached to the material world and that attachment blocks their ability to understand anything spiritual. Only when people become a little bit interested in spiritual life can they actually receive the knowledge that's being given. Before then, they have to go through some sufferings and trials to wake up to the fact that their way of life is simply miserable or suffering or at best boring. <laughs> but when we uh, practice Krishna consciousness and be an example for others, it helps them to see something. We see that a lot with parents and children. The children take the Krishna consciousness, sometimes the parents are against it. But the children continue, and then the parents notice that the children are becoming better people. They're developing good qualities. They're exhibiting many of the good qualities that their parents were trying to teach them, but they could never teach them. So when we see another person exhibiting those characteristics of you know, kindness, simplicity, tolerance, humility, generosity, honesty, wisdom about God. When we see all these things and many more qualities, we, might, we can see that there's something beneficial there. So be an example and find opportunities to relate to these people when the opportunity arises. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna Maharaj, uh, thank you so much uh, for your class. I'm really grateful uh, for the message. I, uh, uh, I have to echo what uh, Tiffany Mataji said, uh, the message was very succinct and very powerful, even though we know the philosophy, I think. Uh, I, I, one of the things I realized when he was speaking is uh, the attachment to Krishna. Um, you, in your class, you said that uh, we're sometimes attached to our husbands and wives and family. And uh, as you were saying that, I realized that I'm more attached to my family than Krishna. <laughs> <laughs> being a Krihasta. And I wanted to know, like, how do you actually increase your attachment to Krishna? And 
decrease your attachment to your family. I don't know if I can. Uh, I'm so attached to my family. So uh, I don't think you. Ha- I don't think you have to decrease your attachment to fa- your family. Yeah. You simply have to increase your attachment for Krishna. That's all. There's no need to try to decrease that relationship. In fact, as one becomes more Krishna conscious, their attachment to others becomes more deeper and more personal. And no longer is simply on the bodily platform, but is based on the relationship from on the soul on the spiritual platform. So doing good to others who we are dear to us becomes something that is natural because we see that person is part and parcel of Krishna. So when we are taking care of our family or taking care of our family responsibilities, we're doing service in relationship to them. We can see them. Oh, this is Krishna's part and parcel who comes as my son or daughter. This is Krishna's part and parcel who comes as my wife. And then we serve them accordingly, knowing that mm, they are connected to Krishna just as much as I am connected to Krishna. (laughs) Just as much as everyone else is connected to Krishna. So I think it's more or less connecting ourselves more with service to Krishna developing more attachment to Krishna, hearing about Krishna more, spending time, more time in that area and bringing our family together along with us in these activities. Then they will also come along in the same way you do. So if we make Krishna consciousness, to use a very glib statement, a family affair, (laughs) then it becomes everyone is moving in the same direction. (laughs) Our love for each other increases as our love for Krishna increases. But it gets away from the selfish attitude which the, which people in the material world define as love. That is, what can I get rather than what can I give? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Service means to give. And when we're giving... We're also getting because that's our nature. We're actually acting according to our nature when we serve others because in that nature awakens us are the happiness that we feel in that relationship. So when we give, we actually feel happy when we give on the spiritual platform. When we give on the material platform, we're looking for some reciprocation for that. And if we don't get it, sometimes our giving becomes less or we become disappointed in the object that we're giving to, or we get false expectations. All of these things can arise when we look, when we give on the material platform, but when we give on the spiritual platform, it includes the material platform too, (laughs) automatically. So it's not about reducing anything about our family relationships. It's about increasing our relationship with Krishna. Thank you so much, Mark. That's really profound. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Hare. Thank you so much. Uh, please accept my humble obeisances, Guru Maharaj. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, thank you very much for this wonderful class on how careful we have to be in bhakti. My question is exactly about this attachment to family, especially our parents. Uh, as devotees, we are trying our level best to help them and to serve them and to be humble. Um, but when they are not really devotees or they're just beginning to understand, they still exert parental authority and they want to take advantage and they want to demand things from you that may not exactly be good for them or good for you. So how do we continue to be respectful and humble and submissive, but at the same time, not spoil our own devotional life? (laughs) It takes a lot of tolerance. takes some t- tolerance. It also takes you to, to see the situation and how to move in that situation. Mm-hmm. 
if you can repeatedly experiencing the same thing, then you have to either change how you uh, approach that relationship, or you have to decrease the relationship, either one. When you, I mean, when you, I, you're speaking personally and your parents are like, you know, they're <laughs> in their 80s plus, you don't change people in their 80s. It's just not possible. They, they don't change. But if they do, if they have a, an inclination for Krishna consciousness, then you simply exhibit your own Krishna consciousness in, in the best possible way. And showing those characteristics. You remain kind, you remain tolerant, you remain concerned. But then again, how much can you take if it's all negative? If it's all negative, then you have to move a little bit out of that so you don't become uh, affected by the negativity. But you don't pursue a relationship unless there's something positive in it. Even if it's, you know, family members, how long can you pursue a relationship if there's nothing positive in it? If there's something in there that is positive, then you can feed that part of the relationship and make it stronger. And you can feed it with Krishna consciousness. It's not easy. <laughs> many people just many people just give up the relationship others just go away some just tolerate and become miserable and those who are really spirit, spiritually strong they tolerate and they continue to try to help the person look at Prahlad Maharaj what did he try to do he kept trying to help his father who was demon number one and he always referred to him as demon number one so you can, you know, you can say to your parents, uh, you can call him instead of demon number one, you can call him, uh, you know, uh, economical enterprise number one, <laughs> something like that, you know, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, you can call him the, <laughs> I don't know what you would call, it, but something that has to do with wealth. <laughs> Uh, oh, best of those who are, you can call them Dun and Jaya, who conquer the world. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, you can uh, relate to him on that level. <laughs> so I'm being a little humorous, but at the same time, it has some merit to it when you think about it. Look what Prahlad Maharaj had to go through. I mean, and his father not only didn't want to hear anything, he wanted to get rid of his son. <laughs> but his son loved his father so much that he didn't give up. Yeah. But his father was finally converted only after he was killed. <laughs> so, right. right, right. So, you know, you can say, I did my best. <laughs> That's how you can say, I tried my best. <laughs> yes, I'm really uh, praying to Mother Krishna Nandini because I'm trying to remember her example of uh, dealing with so many difficult situations, so many difficult people and constantly being kind and patient and tolerant and giving. Uh, you know, she took care of her old mother and so many different things. So just praying for the mercy of Vaishnava, just praying to you, Guru Maharaj, that I can do my best for my yeah. eight-year-old father in spite of... Yeah. Just don't expect any, don't expect them to change. Just do your best, that's all. If they change, that'll be something extraordinary. But. Yes, Guru Maharaj, only by your mercy we can try to carry on with these relationships. It's just next to impossible. It just, huh. anyway, praying for your mercy, Guru Maharaj. Thank you so much for your answer. Any last minute questions, devotees?
Hare Krishna Maharaj, Dandavat Pranam. Thank you so much for another wonderful session, Maharaj. Uh, it is uh, through your uh, question answer session and through your association that actually uh, we can purify our day. I mean, at least make a uh, change our my consciousness at least, uh, at least for the day. So thank you so much. Uh, I I did have a small question on. Uh, you mentioned that uh, as even if we are making progress, we need to constantly watch out for whom we are associating with. Uh, what, uh, what I mean, how how are we maintaining ourselves? So, um, Mara, yeah. yes, can you please explain how we can uh, continue to do that and how we can uh, remember to do that? Yeah. When you're in association with people who are materialistic or um, not Krishna conscious, um, you, there's two things you can do. One, you keep that association short and you just simply deal with the business at hand. If you get into personal relationships with materialistic people, and you allow them to dominate your the relationship, then you go down. If you have to interact with materialistic pieces, people, as Prabhupada would say, don't take their association, give them your association. If someone tries to give something to you and you don't take it, they have to keep it. But if you can give them Krishna through your association or something that will help them on the spiritual path, then you're not becoming affected by their material association. You're actually uplifting them. So that we do, but that requires, you know, just like they say, if you're trying to catch a fish, make sure you don't fall into the water. <laughs> Because if you fall into the water, what is the use of your fishing? <laughs> so if you're trying to help someone become more spiritual, then you have to be careful not to become affected by what they want to give you or just by their association. So therefore, for people in general, we keep it businesslike. For those who are closer to us, we try to keep it on the Krishna conscious topics or something related to something spiritual. Otherwise, if they start uh, encouraging you in the values that they believe in and the values that they live for, uh, then you're gonna go down. Can, can I just uh, ask something uh, directly connected to this? So how about children? Like we deal with our children on a day-to-day -day basis. And uh, I'll give you the example of my son. He is now completely into dinosaurs and learning about them and sharing information on them. So uh, instead, I mean, I can ask him something uh, on Krishna and we can discuss some pastimes, awesome stories. And then he gets back to this topic and he is just, he's just completely overloaded with it. So, and he wants to get <laughs> that information. And well, you can tell him dinosaurs are products of the previous Kali Yugas. <laughs> At the end of the Kali Yuga, the dinosaurs reappear. They're, they're actually factual uh, monsters that come when the quality of life is so low and people are not much better than the dinosaurs. So it's, yeah, Prabhupada actually said that they are coming from another Kali Yuga at the end of the Kali Yuga. So at the end of this Kali Yuga also, the dinosaurs will again start to reappear again. They reflect the consciousness of the, the, of the people who are living at the time. So you can have, you can connect, now you say if 
if you don't want to become, you know, victimized by a dinosaur, you should, you should chant about Krishna, <laughs> something like that. In other words, nobody, we gets fascinated by dinosaurs, but nobody wants to meet a dinosaur. <laughs> Because if you meet a dinosaur, that's the last person you might meet. <laughs> so the fascination is there, but nobody really wants to associate with such animals. How old is he? Uh, he's eight now. Just tell him, you know, if you keep talking about dinosaurs, then they're going to come and take you away. <laughs> That's a different word, yes. Uh, thank you so of course, much. Yeah, give him some Krishna conscious activities. I mean, there were some really powerful Asuric type of persons that Krishna killed, big demons who were sometimes on the level of dinosaurs. <laughs> yes, he, he loves those pastimes too. Yes. Yeah, that's good. And that's a, that's, a, that's a good quality. Thank you so much, Maharaj. Hmm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Vrindavan Nath. Hare Krishna, Guru Maharaj. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. All glories to you, Guru Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, my question is like on Bharat Maharaj uh, pastime. Whenever I read and hear, uh, I always have to uh, reactions in my heart and I thought it's better to ask this uh, he was so self-realized soul and uh, like whole life he devoted for Krishna uh, service completely and uh, towards the end just like uh, he got distracted uh, because of that uh, incident but Krishna say like if some any devotee who has devoted his full life for me towards the end, even if he can't remember me, I will take care of it. So how to really understand that, like, yes, in the next life, he took that and he remembered his life and then he controlled in the next life, like completely, like all the senses, he just... Yeah, you know, well, but, he, he, got, he distanced himself so far away from Krishna that it took him two lives to get back, but he got back. That's the important thing. So Krishna never left him alone. Krishna gave him the ability to understand his past life in the body of a deer. He could remember how he fell down when he was living as a deer. And therefore he never associated with other deers. He associated with sadhus. And he was simply listening to them. And then when he died as a deer, he took birth as Jad Bart. So Krishna never let him alone. So it took, but it took him two lives, it took Krishna two lives to bring him back to Godhead. So Krishna was there. It's just the circumstances took, took that much time. That's all. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. You see the point? You're, you're thinking that Krishna has to, you know, automatically jump in there and do something and solve the solution right at the problem. But that's not the way Krishna does things. He works according to the situation and people have to come along gradually. As they fall, they also have to come back. And so it took him that long to get back. You know? Yes, Guru Maharaj. I think we have to have full faith, full surrender, whatever happens, like it's all Krishna mercy. Yeah. Prabhupada said, Prabhupada said, make it in this life, but if you don't make it in the next, this life, at least in this life, you'll get it. If you do your best in this life, you'll get a good situation where you can make it in your next life. Yes, Guru Maharaj. Thank you very much, Guru Maharaj. But there's much more to the details of that pastime that needs to be explained. For instance, he wasn't on the highest platform of love of God. And that's why he fell. If he was on the highest platform, he, he wouldn't have never fell. But he was reaching the higher platforms. He still was on the Baba platform. He didn't reach Prema. 
But one thing that Bart Maharaj didn't have, which is an indication of why he fell, he didn't have association with devotees. He was all alone in the forest. Yes, Guru Maharaj, that's a very good point. Thank you. I think mm -hmm. you give the lifeline. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Devo. Okay, Adriana, are we completed? <laughs> yes, uh, Maharaj. Uh, do we have any last minute questions from any devotees or we can end the call? Any remarks, any reflections, concerns? Prabhuji, Maharaj will go ahead and end the call, Maharaj. One chakal pata rupees check, you pass into the baby chap, but he then umpire and a blue rice. We are the Hupadi PJ and Antonio to ask him the PJ. Go, His Holiness General Molly Swami Maharaj.